Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, for anyone that's been watching my channel for a while, you'll um, know that I've been debating whether to switch from uh, a DSLR system uh, to a mirrorless system uh, for wildlife photography. And uh, I've covered lots of different aspects. Um, I've debated whether to switch to the Nikon Z system, I've looked at Canon, I've looked at Sony. Uh, I've looked at whether I should go for a high resolution sensor versus um, a slightly lower resolution sensor and the pros and cons to both of those options. Um, now I'm not going to put loads of links up onto this video, um, but all of those videos are under my playlist uh, that's called Equipment. So if you're interested in any of, that, any of those, just go to that playlist and they'll all be there. So for this video, my last um, discussion piece really, I suppose, is about whether micro four thirds cameras are good enough for wildlife photography. And right from the beginning, I want to say yes, they definitely are, uh, because I know quite a few photographers that use Micro Four Thirds, either for Panasonic or Olympus, for wildlife photography, and they get great results. But what I'm talking about is, are, is a Micro Four, si four Thirds system good enough for me, uh, for my particular sort of uh, situation when it comes to photography? And uh, that's what I want to discuss now. So just to re a quick recap. Uh, I initially looked at the uh, Z6 and Z7, but decided that they didn't have good enough auto autofocus for, for wildlife photography. And this is what we're talking about, wildlife or action photography. And then I waited until the Z6 and Z7 II came out and I've discussed the merits of those. And then I've looked at Sony, the R5 and R6, uh, sorry, Canon, the R5 and R6, which are fantastic cameras, and also the Sony's, the A7III's or the A9's. Again, fantastic mirrorless cameras. But for me, the, the biggest problem is for both of the, the Canon and the Sony systems, they're quite expensive, and I've already got loads of Nikon lenses, so I've got a big system, so it would cost me a stack of cash to change from Nikon to Sony or to Canon. So that brought me on to Micro Four Thirds because essentially it is a smaller, uh, it's a smaller camera system. The sensor is half the size of a full frame sensor, but that means the lenses are smaller, the cameras are generally smaller, but more importantly, they're also much cheaper. So potentially I could run a Nikon system for landscapes and for some wildlife photography, and I could run a Four Thirds system for potentially uh, wildlife photography and certainly wildlife video photography. So um, that's where my thinking took me and I wanted to, I did a lot, I've done a lot of research and for me I needed to ask the question is it worth the money to get a second system going, a micro four third system? And there's basically two options, Panasonic or Olympus. So the best stills camera uh, Panasonic do is the Panasonic G9 and with a recent uh, or fairly recent firmware uh, update that video system is also fantastic so the G9 would be great for stills and video they all also do the GH5 or the GH5S which is much more uh, of a video camera and it's fantastic for video if I was just doing video that would be a really good option but I do stills and video so it will be the G9 now um, is it good enough and as I say yes it is I know loads of people or quite a few people that shoot with the G9 wildlife and action photography and get fantastic results. But I'm coming from the position where I'm shooting with an APS-C sensor, so I use a Nikon D500, and then a D800, which is a full frame sensor. So will I notice a difference? So when it comes to image quality, both the uh, Panasonic G9 is a 20 million or 20 megapixel sensor. So it's got a lot of megapixels, but that's on a much smaller sensor. So image quality wise, I think it's good enough, without a doubt. Um, and the upside is obviously it's cheaper than going um, to Sony or Canon. Uh, a G9 body is under a thousand pounds now, just under. And if I coupled that with a 200 to um, a 100 to 400 zoom lens, that effectively gives me a focal length of 200 to 800, 200 to 800 millimeters. So that's well within uh, wildlife photography realms. Now, I know that the 100 to 400. Uh, millimeter zoom lens when you put it on a four thirds camera doesn't make that zoom lens an 800 millimeter lens it's 100 to 400 that's the physical uh, dimensions and focal length of that lens but because the sensor is smaller it gives you a narrower angle of view so in effect it gives you the effect of doubling the focal length now it doesn't double the focal length but it does give you the effect of that and I'm 
not going to go into the ins and outs of how that works in this video but essentially if I put a 100 to 400 millimeter zoom on that G9 Panasonic G9 it would act as if it's a 200 to 800 millimeter zoom so well long enough for wildlife photography so that's a great start image quality is good um, but the biggest drawback with a micro four third system is because it's a smaller sensor you get more digital noise <clears throat> and I've done a lot of research and it looks like you can use a G9 up to about ISO 1600 and it's, it's, it's okay beyond that the noise is starting to kick in uh, maybe you can get away with ISO 3200 but beyond that you don't want to be shooting at those higher ISO numbers so that will be a a really big limiting factor because often when you're shooting wildlife you're shooting in low light situations we've got a moving subject so we need fast shutter speed to freeze the motion of that subject so it means that high ISO performance is really important and the other thing with the G9 is it's um, it's got a slightly older autofocus system uh, so it means the autofocus is good but I don't think it's up to the standards of the Sony sort of Canons uh, have got and those cameras have got absolutely out of this world AF systems and again we've got a moving subject we need good autofocus performance and it's the same really the same um, pluses and minuses with the Olympus uh, the Olympus has got smaller lenses because it's a micro four third system uh, it's got a 20 million pixel sensor a megapixel sensor the, the high-end ones so that's good lots of fine detail um, it's because it's a four third system it's much smaller to carry around so that's a big bonus if you're out in the field for a long time using a smaller camera system is great you know carrying around my um, 600 millimeter prime lens is really hard work so they're all bonuses but again there's going to be more problems with digital knives at high ISOs and it seems to be that the AF system is good but not up to the standards of um, full frame Canon Sony's and probably to a lesser extent Nikon because one of the, the, the reasons I was slightly put off the Z system is the AF isn't as good by all accounts I've not used any of these cameras but by all accounts the AF system in the Z7 II and the Z6 II still isn't as good as the Canons or the Sony's so you know that is a, a downside for the Nikon system at the moment so my thought process has gone through lots and lots and lots of things I've looked at as I say full frame um, the Nikons, the Canons and the Sony's I've looked at um, I've looked at the Fujis, but they don't have a uh, the X series, but they don't have a a really good uh, array of long lenses. Uh, and I've also looked at the four third system. And um, there's lots of pluses for the four third system. You know, the image stabilisation on those bodies is phenomenal. So you can almost shoot video without a gimbal or without a tripod, and that's really great. Uh, they're smaller, they're lighter, and they're cheaper. But for me, because I've got already got a full frame body and I've got an APS-C body and the noise control on those bodies is phenomenal, I think the 4 thirds system uh, is probably not for me. Uh, for two reasons. Firstly, because um, my lights just dropped down a little bit there, so hopefully you can still see me okay. Um, so firstly, um, the ISO performance. Now, you can get great noise reduction software now Topaz is a prime example so that may not be such a big deal and it looks like the AF performance again is, is not quite as good as you know the industry standards for other camera brands so for me um, I'm not going to go for a four third system although there are some really compelling arguments plus the fact uh, Panasonic have also gone into full frame uh, system themselves so you know you've got to ask yourself how long are they going to support the four third system and Olympus has been taken over Olympus have actually sold their camera division uh, to another company so again you've got to ask yourself how much research and develop, development will go into the four thirds Olympus system so there are other factors to uh, to consider I think so for me I've pretty much narrowed everything down now it's taken a long time I'm definitely not going to go for the four third system it is easily good enough for wildlife photography no question about that um, but the you know the drawbacks of ISO performance and AF you know it doesn't warrant me running a second system because I'd all, always want a full frame camera as well so I'm going to discard the four third system I'm not going to switch to a Canon or Sony because you know the thing is I could do that but I've got lots of Nikon gear and the thing that I would miss most of all 
would be my 600mm prime lens. And I don't think I could afford to buy that again, either for the Canon uh, or the Sony. So it does mean I need to stick with uh, Nikon, and that's what I'm going to do. And by all accounts, even though the autofocus system for the Z6 II and the Z7 II isn't as good as the Sony's or the Canon's, it's been improved enough, I think. So my only decision now is whether I go for a Z7 II for that higher resolution, uh, so I've got more cropping uh, options because I've got more megapixels to crop, or whether I go for the Z6 II, uh, which will have better noise performance because there's less pixels on that sensor. And that'll be better noise performance, not just for the stills, but also for video in low light. So that's a big decision. And then the last thing um, I am gonna consider is um, for my 600 millimeter prime, it, I use that on its own, but also with a 1.4 converter, which gives me a focal length of 840 millimeters. And that's great. Um, so the biggest problem with me, when I'm shooting wildlife, I normally shoot with my D500 which is an APS-C sensor. So that magnifies, again, the focal length. Um, in real terms, it magnifies the focal length by narrowing the angle of view uh, by 1.5. So it turns my 600 mil into a 900 mil. And then I can put the 1.4 on and get an even bigger reach. And that's great. When I'm using um, my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom, the 500 millimeter zoom, it magnifies it to 750, which again, it increases the potential reach of this lens. Now, when I switch to a mirrorless system, I'll be going to full frame, and that will be the Z6 or the Z7 II, which means I lose that magnification factor, so my subject won't be as big in the frame as it would be on an APS-C sensor. And um, that's why I need to decide whether to go for the higher resolution sensor, so I've got more ability to crop. One thing I'm gonna do is try out my 1.4 converter my 200 to 500 millimeter uh, zoom lens. Never used it on the zoom lens before because the, um, the 1.4, it reduces the aperture or the amount of light coming into the lens by one stop. So it turns it from a 5.6 lens into an f8 lens, which means you've, you do really need very good light for to, to shoot with the 1.4 on. Uh, and also it will reduce the lens sharpness and the AF speed slightly. So it works great on a prime. I've never tried it on this zoom. But if it works well enough on this zoom, then that will take some of that problem away from switching my wildlife photography from a crop sensor APS-C body to a full frame body. And then it may well be that the um, good low um, light performance of the Z6 II may well be worth going for because you know the fact that I can't crop so much on the Z6 II, it might, that might be negated if I can get away with using a 1.4 converter on my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom. Now, I know this is me waffling on about camera equipment, but at the end of the day, the kit we use is important. And, uh, you know, these are all decisions we have to make to get the best out of our photography. Now, the most important thing when it comes to wildlife photography is knowing the kit you're using, understanding the animal, having the patience to get those great pictures, understanding light. But you know, having the right kit also helps and they're decisions that we all need to make and the last thing we wanna do is waste money, isn't it? So that's why I've made this video. Hopefully my thoughts will help you, guide you also into making the right choices when it comes to buying kit. If you've got any uh, comments, of course, can you please put them in the um, comment section below, especially if you shoot with Micro Four Thirds. Let me know how you get on. What's the nice performance like? How is the AF on the Olympus or the panor panor uh, panoramic? Panasonic, sorry, system. I'd be really interested to know. That would be great. And like always, if you've enjoyed this video, if you can give it a like or a thumbs up, that would be great. It always helps my channel. And if you haven't already considered subscribing, if you can consider subscribing, that would be great. And if you do, press a little while, bell icon so you're notified when I put my next video up. So that's about it. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching and listening, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short video about equipment and uh, I'll speak to you. Uh, on my next video. So bye for now.